Hi, I'm Callum from Time Valley Motorhomes and this is the handover video of a Eldest Signature CV60. So as we start the walk around on the driver's side of the vehicle first, the first point you get to is your gas filling point. So fitted to this vehicle is a 25 litre gas tank. So there's no need for a bottle and you would fill this via your local centre that sells LPG on the pump. Remove the cover. It's a bayonet fitting so get the filler gun, it pushes in there and it twists onto the filling point and then pull the trigger back. It will pressurise it to the vehicle and press and hold until simply it won't take any more on the display and then you'll be able to unconnect and this is the gas low system full. And this will take around 20, 25 pound depending on your, how much you're paying on LPG to fill this system. Next we have your toilet, so this is your toilet cassette and to open this door you use the habitation key which is the small round headed key and you'll be able to push both buttons in. This one is magnetic so if you put it on the side wall of the van it will stay up and to remove the cartridge of the cassette you would lift the orange Fedford handle up and slide the cassette out of the van. You can carry it or you can wheel it depending on how full it is. So if it's too heavy to carry, wheel it to the disposal point, which is beside your toilet block. And then you would take the cap off, pop the cap to one side, start to pour the content of the cassette down the disposal point. And as you start to pour it, press the orange button at the top here. This will allow a bit of air in and stop it glugging and give it a consistent flow. Tip out, once you've tipped out, there's normally a tap so you put a bit of water in, give a rinse, tip out again before going in with a cap full of liquid which can be green or blue and is 120ml capacity of this cap so 120ml of chemical into here and it's good to go back into the van and be used. But ask your sites which they prefer you to use because some want green now because it's more environmentally friendly and some will still allow you to use blue. Two taps underneath, so you've got two outlets for grey, which is your dirty water, so anything collected via a plug hole on the way out of the site, drive over the service bay and crack this open and this is your dirty water. You want to get rid of that so you're not driving around with the added weight of dirty water because once it's dirty you can't do anything with it. It's just going to impact your payload and your consumption of your fuel. So get rid of that. And this is your fresh water. So your fresh water you would drain down if you've got a full tank to um, a minimum of 20 litres when travelling unless you're going wild camping where you will have to take a full tank of water with you. If you've taken on a source of contaminated water or you're simply not using the van for a while, you want to open this and allow this out. Make sure both taps are left open in the winter to avoid the water from freezing in the tanks below the chassis. Next you have a breather pipe for the water heater. So this will condense and this will drip. This isn't a fault, this is, it's a condensing boiler so that's just how it works. So if you see that dripping, don't panic, it is just how it operates. Small little key unlocks the wheel flap for the fresh water. So for your fresh water filling point, buy yourself a hose pipe with some hose pipe fittings, as it's mainly just a brass tap provided by the site. Put the flat end of the hose between the grooves in here, fill it until either it overflows or until you're happy there's enough water on board. External mains 230 volt socket, so if you want the power on the outside of the vehicle, hook an extension up to there, chuck it underneath the van, you'll be able to have it underneath your awning canopy. And to, and to charge your vehicle, if you're on site or you're charging it at home, you'd need to hook it up via the mains hookup point on the vehicle, which is, this is. So you get your hookup blade, lift the collar, Hook the vehicle first and then the site and do it in reverse order when unhooking so that you're never walking around with a live cable in your hand. On the back of this particular vehicle you do have a Carry 6200 DG bike rack in black. So pull the frame down, put your bikes on, push the red 
catch in there and it will will release the tie down strap tie through the spokes the wheels down to the rails and then you've got your crossbars so your last bike and your first bike put that through the middle of the bike frame to hold the bikes up and then put some sort of bike lock around your bikes on the back of the frame of the bike rack just so that if you did leave it unattended on a site or in the service stations your bikes aren't going to be stolen built into the top brake light there you do have a reversing camera be careful don't open this door 90 degrees with the bike rack on if you didn't have a bike rack on you can press this button in and open the door 90 degrees but don't because this one's got a bike rack on if yours doesn't then you can you do have some storage in here you can see you've got your carpets your auto winding handle in there some storage underneath the trench bed at the back always shut this door first then this door and be careful you don't knock yourself out with the bike rack coming down the passenger side of the vehicle you've got your awning light and above that you've got your awning it's a bit windy to show you your awning but we do have a clip already on our YouTube channel of how to operate this operate this Dometic awning I will send you that along with this video however we can show you that on collection your step operates on this switch here and it will automatically retract when the engine or ignition is turned on on vehicle it has to be turned off the engine to get this step back out and you do have a full size fly screen make sure you use both hands to send it back because it is a bit heavy beside the passenger door you'll find the location of the fuel filling point and it fills with diesel via the ignition key underneath you do have AdBlue because it's a Euro 6 compliant engine this is a 19 litre cap capacity of the AdBlue tank, so it takes 19 litres to fill. It illuminates between the temperature and fuel gauge on the dashboard when it needs AdBlue. It's full at the moment and it'll do 5,500 miles on a full 19 litres. Once you've done 4, 4,500 miles, it'll illuminate. You can buy this on the pumps, it's far cheaper, it's about 120 a litre. So look for where your wagons pumps off a diesel and normally beside that you've got your ad blue pump on your big service stations to fill up or you can in the drums it is about 10 litres um, for the in the drums it comes in 10 litres even and it is about 20 pounds so it is a little bit cost more cost effective to buy it on the pump however it's entirely up to you five and a half bar tyre pressures which is 79.5 psi front and back and you've got your tyre size there Underneath the passenger seat is where you can find the tool kit which includes a jack, a brace, a tow eye, everything that you need to change that spare wheel. As it's a Ducato, the engine battery isn't underneath the bonnet, it's underneath this compartment in the floor. So you've got to release this lid, underneath there is your engine battery. Bonnet release is here. And having a quick look underneath the bonnet, pointing out the vital Parts. you've got your screen wash here three tabs lift this part of the scuttle you've got your power steering fluid and your coolant next to that you do have your brake and clutch fluid oil filler and the dipstick paint code 453 earth for giving or receiving a jump start so your black crocodile clip will go on there and then between the air filter and the fuse board if you put your key or something flat just in here and lift this up this is your positive for giving or receiving a jump start weight plate on there so three and a half ton gross vehicle weight if you were to put a tow bar on and tow you can tow two ton behind the motorhome so you can't exceed five and a half ton front and back axle weights and then every eldest has a unique sge number so that's the bottom number just here quote that if you need any parts or any warranty claims because that is your unique build number from Eldis. So to operate your control panels, first of all you've got your 12 volt control panel. So to get any power in the vehicle, you want to turn on your master switch which is this button here. This will give you 12 volt from the leisure battery. However, if you are hooked up, you will have mains to 30 volt. 
to get your lights on, you need the master switch for the lights, which is the one underneath it. And then the lights are all individually switched around the van. Awning light is the light on the outside of the vehicle, so this is the outside light switch. And pump is a picture of the tap, so to pressurise the water through the water system, you need to turn the pump on, but only turn the pump on when you've got water on board. If you haven't got water on board, don't turn the pump on when you come on board. But you can turn the pump on like so, and then when you open the taps, toilet and shower, you'll get a pressurised flow of water. To view your water level is this one here, and to view your battery level is this one, picture of the battery which is your leisure battery. Unhook the vehicle to get a true reflection of your leisure battery reading. This is your entrance light, so this is the light above the habitation door when you come in, you'll be able to turn that on and off. To operate your wheel heating and hot water system. So you've got heating, which is this button here, and hot water, which is the top button. The room temperature is on the plus and the minus, and goes all the way up to 30 degrees. You can have it on frost start, which is the snowflake at the start here, which is above 5 degrees. Or you can have it on the moon, which is nighttime mode, which is 15 degrees. And then, like I say, where it is now is at 30 degrees. So starting off with the hot water. To heat the hot water, you've got a few options of which source you want to use. So you can have it all the way down to off, press it once, snowflake, which is frost start, which keeps the water above 5 degrees of freezing. You've got one wavy line, which is 750 watts, which is the lower output of electric. You've got two wavy lines, which is 1500 watts of mains 230 volt power. You've got gas, which is gas on its own, which you'd use if you were wild camping or weren't hooked up. The only way you could heat your water is on gas. You've got gas plus one wavy line, which is gas plus 750 watts of electric. So it's using electric and gas together. Or you've got gas and two wavy lines, which is gas and 1500 watts of electric. So if you're in desperate need of hot water, have it on this source. And what that'll do is it will reduce the time it takes to heat the 10 litres up in the boiler. So that should take around 7 to 10 minutes on both sources there to heat the full 10 litres of water up in the boiler. Then when the water is warm, stop wasting your gas and just turn it back to 2 kilowatts of mains power. Underneath you've got your heating, so to heat the vehicle, You've got again 750 watts of mains 230 volt power, 1500 watts of mains 230 volt power, 3000 watts of mains power, gas on its own, so if you're wild camping or weren't hooked up to heat the motorhome up you'd have to use gas, and then you do have gas plus 1500 watts of mains power. Always make sure you turn them off like so, and allow the system to go quiet and this will shut them down correctly, otherwise what may happen is you'll get a exclamation mark on the side and to avoid this from happening and to clear the code you'd have to press whatever's failed, so say the exclamation mark came here, you'd press heating and hot water in together and it will eliminate the exclamation mark. If it was hot water, hot water and plus together, press and hold to eliminate that. And then this little dial here is your gas system level indicator. So this will tell you how much gas is on board your 25 litre gas tank. So it's shown green there, which is good, which means the gas is full. If that's starting to show red, the gas is empty and it's time to refill. You can turn this on and off, but it does come on with the main 12 volt control panel. In the kitchen area, as long as your pump's on, you'll get a pressurised flow of water from the hot and cold side of the tap. And that there is coming through warm. The hot water system is pressurised and up to temperature.
for your cooking facilities, you do have one electric hot plate which operates on mains 230 volts. So you've got to be hooked up for the hot plate to work. And you can also use the gas. So you've got two gas rings. Under that you do have a grill. And under the grill, you've got an oven. Your microwave on, on this CV60 is situated here. And that is a mains microwave. So that works on mains 230 volts. So you've got to be hooked up for the microwave to operate it as it's an 800 watt microwave. So to turn the microwave on, just so you don't get confused, underneath here there's a plug for the microwave, but this switch also operates as a isolator switch. So you've got to have that turned on for the microwave to work. And like I say, 800 watt mains microwave, so you've got to be hooked up for this to work. To operate your Fedford fridge, which is a 12 volt compressor fridge, so it'll work when not hooked up off the leisure battery and it'll work when hooked up because you're charging your leisure battery but it is only 12 volt you can turn it on and off here when turned off always leave the door open so you can put the little blue clip in the middle there rest the door upon it and it'll allow air to circulate in and out of the fridge as it forms a airtight seal with a rubber seal when shut fully and you'll just trap the air in and cause the van to smell over time so you turn it on select your temperature five when pre-chilling when you put your shopping in turn it down because the compressor fridges do get very cold very quick and can freeze your shopping and then you do have a nighttime mode which lowers the performance by lowering the decibels of the fridge when sleeping so on a night you might want to put in nighttime mode so it's not making so much noise if you ever need any parts, this is your part sticker, so quote any Fetford dealer, us, any motorhome dealer, they, this, these numbers, just so that they can get the right parts for your fridge. And we've got a freezer compartment on there as well. So now in your washroom, to use the toilet, you'd press the blue button at the back here, which will get you fresh water flush as long as the pump's on. So always get into a habit of flushing the toilet first because it helps lubricate the seal between the blade and the top of the cassette. So give it a flush, just a small amount of water and then before using it you want to open the blade which is this grey handle here. So slide this to the right, open the hatch, allows everything to go into the cassette, use the toilet, give it a good flush after use. If you've bought any pink bowl cleaner just put a some pink into a spray bottle, dilute the rest with water, spray the bowl, flush and close it back to the left. Once the cassette is isolated and shut, the cassette will come out this outside of the van. If this was to be left open and you try to get the cassette out, it won't come out because the mechanism on the top of the cassette is still engaged with the toilet. So it's got to be closed for the cassette to come out. And when full, you'll get three green lights underneath the diagram of the cassette, which indicates that it is full and it is time to empty the cassette, give it a rinse, replenish with chemical. But like I say, that's got to be closed to get the cassette out. Your shower is also your hand baits and taps, so that clips up there when having a shower. Feed the pipe back down. You'll be able to. So that's just because the system's been drained down as it's November now. We drain the systems down to avoid the water from freezing. So it's just purging the water through on this tap. And there you have a pressurised flow of water. And that is up the temperature there. Plug pushes in. And you push that out. To let the water out. Be careful with what you wash the toilet, the sink and the shower tray with. 
use no harsh bleaches or abrasive sponges use a microfiber uh, and some Dettol spray or some washing up liquid nothing too harsh to finish because you'll strip the finish off the plastic you've got your shower curtain which is neatly tucked up there and you've got a toiletry cabinet just under here just underneath the oven is where the boiler drain is on the CV range so what you need to do here is in the winter you need to drain off the water because otherwise it could freeze and cause damage which isn't covered by the warranty so this yellow tap which is currently pointing to the back of the passenger seat needs to point to the washroom door so you turn it like so and this will allow the 10 litres of water in the boiler to drain directly out underneath the chassis whilst that's draining also open the fresh and the waste outside the van inside the van open every tap you can so kitchen hand basin shower you want them all open if the shower head is removable remove it from the hose pull the hose out and lie that in the shower tray just so no water can sit in there and potentially freeze and then once the water is all drained off turn the pump on and any water that's sitting in any pipelines will cough out the tap and then turn the pump off so only you need the pump on for 10 seconds or so when you come to reuse it the first thing you want to do is close the valve so point it back to the back of the passenger seat close the fresh and the waste outside assemble the shower head back up shut all your taps fill the vehicle with cold water come in put the control panel on put the pump on open the cold side of the tap first you'll get a pressurized flow of water go to the hot side as you start to slowly mix the water from cold to a bit of cold and hot you'll get a bit of coughing and spluttering and spitting of water keep going and let it do its thing because what it's doing is it's pushing the air out the system until you get a consistent flow of pressurized hot water so once the boiler is full you'll get a consistent pressurized flow of water on the hot side of the tap then you'll be able to heat it and this is your boiler full but all it's doing is it's purging the water by pushing the air out of the system so don't panic it happens on every van it's totally normal so at the back of the cv60 so this is your french bed so this is like a day sofa so what you can do is you can use this as a sofa you've got a sideboard unit here with some storage in tv brackets tv points so you can put your telly on there sit on here during the day and then when it's ready when you're ready to go to bed should i say all you need to do is slide this out pull this forward and drop the back in so that goes into position there and there you have you formed your french double bed at the back of the vehicle Underneath the bed is where you can find your consumer unit. So at the top there, you've got all your mains, 230 volt MCBs, so your fuse spurs for all your items, and your RCD main trip tester. So if the vehicle trips, try here before you try your main site. And if you aren't receiving power, the best way to check is tripping the vehicle out by pressing that blue square button there. If the vehicle trips, you've got power. If it doesn't trip, you aren't receiving power. Underneath you've got all your 12 volt fuses, so do carry some spare fuses with you. They're all listed on what they do. And if a fuse does blow, you can replenish the fuse when you're away on holiday. So that's the beauty of carrying some spares with you. And then at the bottom there you've got a toggle switch, which is for your tank heaters. So your tank heaters are in your fresh and your wastewater tanks. And what that does is it puts a current through the water to stop the water from freezing but when not using it it's always recommended in the winter that they're fully drained off to avoid the water from freezing the heated tanks are more for when you're using the motorhome